and Ellie in the chat. I've been having some problems with my laptop. But if you're ready, let me see those L's roll in. L, 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 capital L. If you're from wetlands, L, 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 I see them, I see them. We're all ready, we're all ready. So let's go. So this topic, or the, well, this session's topic is all about habitats and extinction. And I already have the um, definition of habitat on the screen. So you already see what it is. So habitat is a place where animals or plants live. Very simple, very simple, nothing too complex. Um, they get food, water, and shelter there. So your habitat, can anybody tell me what your habitat is? A house. Yeah, your habitat is your house. My, my habitat house. is my house. And um, as much as we can say, oh, a habitat is where um, animals live and so on, sometimes we even overlook that our backyards are habitats, our gardens are habitats. I mean, our trees are habitats because that's where animals live. I have animals that live on the roses in my yard, caterpillars, ants. Everywhere that can sustain life, is a habitat. So sustain life, giving um, animals food, water, and shelter is a habitat. So can anybody identify the um, animals on our screen today? Nobody? We just don't know these awesome animals. Zebra. Zebra. Um, mm -hmm. Squirrel. Squirrel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Seagull. Uh, if I cannot see it, I'm not sure what type of bird it is. Uh, uh, um, it's a seabird <laughs> and a fish. <laughs> um, so, seagull, squirrel. You got it, Harley. You got it. Um, so, let me continue now. So, where do these animals live? You have animals that live on the water, and you have animals that live on land. And those are the two main places where animals on earth live, on water, in water and on land, I should say. So there are different types of habitats. We have the desert, the rainforest, the tropical, yeah, tropical rainforest, which shout out to all the tropical rainforest people. If you're from tropical rainforest, let me see. And L in the group, capital L for tropical rainforesters. Okay. Yes, Danielle is from tropical rainforest. Danielle alone. Okay, big up Danielle from tropical rainforest. <laughs> William say, come on. Sahana, okay. Um, forest, savanna, Arctic, and Antarctic, and you also have the ocean. So the desert, uh, pictures are blocking it. So the, the desert, deserts are very hot and dry and there aren't many animals or plants that live there. Um, there are all kinds of cactuses and desert animals are nocturnal, they sleep during the day and they hunt at night when the desert is cool. So let me tell you something about the desert. As we all know, the desert is fully covered in sand. Like there's no desert that you go to that doesn't have sand. And there are special animals that live there. And, animal, and animals that live in, a, in the desert are adapted to live there. So if you take out um, a, a, a specific animal, for example, if you take out um, a snake from a desert habitat, a, a desert snake, and you bring him to Antarctica or you bring him to Canada um, in the winter, he's going to die. Because he, his body or its body is adjusted to the harsh conditions. So the cold is going to, you know, kill it. And it won't be able to find food in that environment because it's not um, used to that environment. It's used to going into the sun to get cool. It's used to chasing its prey. It's used to doing all of that. But in a colder climate, a, 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 an organism that would survive in a desert would definitely die. So desert animals include 
snakes. And I named one already. Can anybody else name any other animal that you see on the screen? Or maybe not on the screen, but you know that they are from the desert. Come on, come on. Camel, scorpion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. lizard. Mm -hmm. Any what other animals? What is last form down there? Oh, this is just a tree. It's just a tree that's grown out. Also, just a snake, a lizard. A side wonder snake, mm -hmm. and a camel. Mm -hmm. And we also have meerkats, who are not cats, but they're like a cousin of mon monkeys, monkeys, <laughs> who can stand up and they in on the sand and they look around to see if there are any snakes approaching. They they kind of look like monkeys, yeah. So it's the Saharan cousin or the desert cousin of a Jamaican mongoose. Mm -hmm. So forests, these are another habitat and there are lots of trees there um, and plants and a big variety of animals because of the plenty of water. So forests, hmm, can anybody identify a forest in Jamaica? Mm -hmm. or, a, or a woodland area that you call a forest? Blue mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can say blue mountain has a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else? Hollywell. Hmm. I'm not quite associated with Hollywell, but yeah. Um, persons usually called densely wooded areas, forests, and it's not usually like. A small section, for example, um, where is a small section? Like you wouldn't call Hope Gardens a, a forest. You wouldn't call Hope Gardens a forest. You'd, you'd more likely call the environment that um, around mountains, the tree, the tree set up around mountains, that's what you call like a forest in, in Jamaica. But you have like the Amazon rainforest, you have the Try to think of another one that's not that's just as popular. So you have the Amazon rainforest, and then you have rainforests in parts of Africa that I don't think you guys would be affiliated with. So some forest animals include owls, bears, squirrels, wolves, rabbits, and Moose. A moose is an animal that you'd find in a in a forest. And um, does anybody know any other animals that you'd find in a forest? Yes, man, moose. Yeah, they're usually in in wooded areas. Mm -hmm. You can also find some snakes in forests. Yeah, you can find. Um, you can find monkeys in the forest as well. You can find bats in the forest as well. Um, because even though an animal, what, we can, what we'll come to realize is that even though an animal is generally known for one area, they have cousins or relatives that can be in other areas. So for example, we know that we have snakes that can be in the desert. But there are also snakes that can exist in the forest. And perhaps a desert forest, a desert snake, I should say, wouldn't be able to survive in the forest, but uh, and, a, and a forest snake wouldn't be able to survive in the desert. And even though they are both snakes, they are in different environments, so they have adapted to different environments. And as a result, they cannot live in other environments. So the Arctic and Antarctic. So <clears throat> we all know the Arctic area and the Antarctic area. It's really cold. They're on the top and bottom sections of the world, the top, the North and South Pole. And the further you move away from areas like Jamaica, where it's warm and closer to the equator, um, it's the cooler it gets. And so this is because um, the sun is, because of how the earth is tilted, 
the sun would most likely penetrate on areas close to the equator. But as you move up to the North Pole, it's, it's, it's leaned a little away from the sun. So there are some parts, there's sometimes in um, Antarctica and the Arctic Circle where there's no sun, it's just night. And when there's such an extended period of, of, of darkness, it's easier for the place to remain cool because there's no sun to melt the ice and increase the overall temperatures of the surroundings. Um, and in these areas, we're going to find different animals as well. Animals that you wouldn't see in the rainforest, you wouldn't see in the desert. And uh, can anybody name an animal or, or two that you'd find in the Arctic or Antarctic Circle? Polar bear? Yes, polar bears, that is true. Can anybody else name any other animals that they know Penguins. are from these areas? Penguins. Mm -hmm. Penguins. Arctic there are certain fox. Mm -hmm. Arctic fox. And you also have the seals. You can't find, you won't find seals in Jamaica and um, you won't find walruses in Jamaica either. Walruses are from the Arctic areas. What else wouldn't you find in Jamaica? You have Arctic hares, which are basically winter rabbits that you'd only find there that you won't find in Jamaica. And you'll always, you'll notice that, as I stated before, even though they may look alike, animals may look alike and they may be related, because they are from different habitats, they have adjusted to different habitats habitats and so they, they have adjusted to different environments and so they wouldn't be able to live there. So a Jamaican rabbit, does anybody here have a rabbit? No? Okay. <laughs> if you take your, if, if I take my rabbit and I bring him or it to the Arctic Circle, my rabbit is gonna die because, can anybody explain why? I said it earlier. Go ahead, I believe in you guys. Because of the climate. Mm -hmm. They aren't adjusted to that climate. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the next slide. So, so here are some animals that we had mentioned earlier. The penguin, the baby polar bear. Yeah, it looks like a seal, but it has fur, so it's, it's a baby polar bear and an eagle. So we've gone through some of the habitats, and even though we mentioned... Oh, so these are Antarctic animals, and these are Arctic animals. And, Antar and Antarctica is basically the South Pole, and... Arctic animals would be found at the North Pole. Also, fun fact, Antarctica is one of the largest continents um, on Earth, but it's mostly made of ice. It's more ice than it is land, and uh, nobody actually inhabits that part of the world because it's so far away from the rest of the continent. So persons will live in the Arctic Circle, like Eskimos and um, persons from Iceland would go up there. Per areas in Russia are also really close to the Arctic Circle, but you won't find many people living down in Antarctica because it's so far away from the rest of the countries in the world. And it's kind of uninhabitable because of that. Or people just choose not to live there for too long. <laughs> All right, so jungles. Jungles are very wet and hot. It rains every day. There are millions of plants and animals that live. Um, mm -hmm, and the trees are giant. So typical photo of a jungle we can see here. It's very heavily um, covered with vegetation and it's wet. It's wet all the time. And you can see these kind of 
lands in the Eurasian area. So you can go to Thailand and you can see a jungle. You have jungles also in, yeah, a, lot, a majority of Asia, well, a lot of Asian countries have jungles and certain parts of Africa, wet areas with that are heavily, veg, have heavy vegetation, perfect areas for uh, animals for jungle, from jungles to live in. So jungle animals include tigers, butterflies, alligators, crocodiles. As the, again, another type of snake. So, so far we learned that we have desert snakes, jungles and jungle snakes, and you have all other kinds of snakes. You have hippos that live in the jungles as well. Um, parrots and monkeys. Mm -hmm. And who can name the spider here? Dum, 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 Is it a tarantula? Mm -hmm. You guessed it. That's a tarantula. So, savannah. A savannah is, uh, hmm, I want to call it, it's like a desert, it's hot like a desert, but it also has vegetation but not as much as a jungle or a rainforest. So a savanna is a hot grassland where there are very few trees. As savannas have only two seasons, a dry season and a rainy season. So just like Jamaica, I'm not saying Jamaica is a savanna, but Jamaica only has two seasons as well. Um, in the summer times, we have a dry season. It's hot, the dam, the dam water is low, um so we have to have water lock offs and um in the december months or the cooler months we have a lot of rain and we call that the dry, the rainy season so savannas are largely found in on the african continent continent oh my um can anybody name an, an animal or two that you could find in a savanna or on a savanna Who is the king of the jungle? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Lion. lion. Mm -hmm. That's one. Cheetah. Who's, yes, cheetah, the fastest animal on earth. Wow. Also have savannah, savannah snakes. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. So let's discover some. So here are a lot that we, dev we never mentioned. So as we can see, we have the lion. The king of the jungle, because you do you do have jungle lions, as we are learning. You know, a lot of these animals have cousins that can live in different habitats that can survive in another. You have cheetahs, you have kangaroos, mm, you have rhinos, you have elephants, you have zebras, wildebeest. So this is a wildebeest. And if you watched Lion King, you'd know that these guys killed Mufasa. Yes, and um, giraffes. So these are the typical animals that everybody knows um, from the savannah. The ocean. So water covers nearly 75% of the earth. And as we learned earlier today, water is like super important to life. We use it in our bodies, we use it for recreation, we use it for everything. And nature uses it as well. And there are a myriad of animals that are that live in the ocean. Like we could sit here and list out every single animal or organism that lives in the ocean and we'd probably never finish until, I don't know, tomorrow. There are five oceans, the Pacific, ocean which is right here the atlantic ocean which is right here right beside the caribbean sea the indian ocean right below india between africa and australia and southern ocean hmm. arctic ocean as well southern ocean hmm. 
So ocean animals, so we have the, I'm going to leave this one up to you guys to answer. Wetlands, take it away. Tropical, rainforest, take it away. If you see an animal and you know it, let everybody know that name. you know. Huh? Supposed to name them right? Yes, go ahead. Shark. Mm -hmm. Dolphin. Mm -hmm. Is that a goldfish? It's not. The human highly says shark, dolphin, seahorse, turtle. Starfish, octopus, sea turtle, seahorse. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And does. Anybody recognize this one in particular? It's this fish. Clownfish. It's a clownfish. Yeah, it's Nemo. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> you named all the sea animals correctly, so that's great. So extinction. I left this blank because I wanted this to be our activity. So I'll jump into what extinction entails, and then when we're finished we'll come up with our definition. So, the causes of extinction. Wait, does anybody want to guess what it is before we go into it? Extinction. It happened to the dinosaurs. It happened to dodo birds. It happened to- I know, yes. Huh? It's when there are, there are not anywhere in the world anymore and are not alive. Mm -hmm. When a species, Daniel says, when a species is no longer living. Yeah. So we'll write our official definition when we're finished because we're scientists and so we need to have our, you know, proper definition. But it's generally, you know, when the species cease to exist like they don't exist anywhere on earth and um yeah there's no and there probably isn't any way to bring them back to life for example dinosaurs they're completely extinct and while we do have um relatives of them still living uh they don't exist anymore so extinction the original dinosaurs don't exist anymore um so ex causes of extinction um, you have habitat destruction and fragmentation, national and international wildlife trade, pollution, and overharvesting. So habitat destruction, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into all of them. So habitat destruction basically has to do with us humans going into the habitats and destroying everything, as the name suggests. So, for example, in Jamaica, we um, cut down, well, in the world, we cut down trees. We, that's called deforestation. And um, we clear out the land so that we can build houses, so we can build cities, so we can build roads. But what happens is that when we do that, we're destroying the environments of animals and sometimes we're even killing some of them in the process. And has anybody ever been to the North-South Highway? been on the north south highway when you're going to um okay. mm -hmm, where you go when, like when you're going to old Rios, that highway you know how, you notice how long it is um it goes right through the mountains imagine all the trees that they had to cut up cut down all the animals that had to get out of the way for them to do that so we do that kind of stuff to, to, to build our roads and stuff like that. And we also use the trees for timber and for petroleum resources, meaning gas, we use that area for gas to clear out the, the way for mining as well. So in St. Elizabeth, we can go there and we can see big holes in the ground. And those big holes in the ground are where they take out aluminum for, for well, they take out bauxite for aluminum production. And in other places in the world, they clear out areas and they dig into the ground and they, they, they take out um, 
gold and diamond and everything but in the process of doing that they're, they're hurting other animals and also we dig into the sea how many of you guys knew this we dig into the sea in order to get oil and sometimes when the oil spills it causes um a lot of animals to get hurt in the process uh, also we do scuba dive when we do scuba diving and we touch the coral reefs that can damage them and when the coral reefs are damaged and the fish don't come back i mean we are as humans we are doing a lot to harm our environment and destroy the habitats of our creatures and yeah that contributes to their extinction because if they have nowhere to live or get food or get water they will die yeah so national and international wildlife trade so poaching and illegal wildlife trade are another common threat to animals so for example when somebody wants an exotic did anybody watch i didn't watch it i just asking um tiger king is that what it, is that is that what it's called um i don't remember what it's called i'm not sure the content but basically i was aware that um the person had tigers if you live in a country where you don't have tigers naturally living there oftentimes you're going to be getting it from an illegal trade so you will hire somebody to get to get the tiger from um siberia or wherever well siberian tigers are extinct but hypothetically and then you bring it to jamaica and when you remove it from its environment it's unable to mate with tigers from that area it's unable to cre cre create more children it's unable to well not children cubs um you know sustain the environment there when you bring it here and it dies you know you're contributing to the to, to the to the decrease in numbers of those tigers in that area so you're you're overall decreasing the entire population of of um tigers and does anybody know rio the cartoon about the bird from like brazil yes miss okay that bird um that movie was actually made um for as a cartoon yeah but it was also to bring awareness to the extinction of those kind of birds in that area well the endangerment of those kind of birds in that area because those are popular birds that um you know have been targeted by tourists who want to have these pretty birds in their houses and um sadly that since that movie came out it's only been um worse persons are more in interested in getting those kind of animals and so the population of real birds that those kind of birds in particular have been declining so the fur trade as it's saying um some persons they don't want the tiger for a pet they want the tiger print um shirt the coat and everything so they will literally pay persons to get real tiger fur and in doing that they kill the tigers and um, they remove the skin and they use the skin for for clothing bush meat trade mm, a bit self-explanatory persons go into the habitats kill the animals and use their eat their meat and they do it in a way that is excessive um so that the population can recover body parts trade perfect example of this is um you ever hear you ever watch a movie and you see like a bear skin rug in somebody's house like the bear is spread out on the ground or you see a stuffed tiger and stuff like that um persons literally pay persons to kill animals skin them and they have the animals just in their house um you have all people also do that for sharks as well and have shark teeth displayed in their house um trade for biomedical research so we also kill animals and um, plants in order to get stuff to sustain uh, the pharmaceutical industry so for make medicine basically pollution also contributes to um extinction and and global warming um so whenever we allow the waste products to get into the water bodies 
the water bodies provide. So for example, a river, we let out waste into a river. The fish in the river will, will feel the consequences of that. Sometimes they die, sometimes the um, chemicals mutate them. So they start to have two headed fish babies and all, them, all of those things. Um, it makes it harder for them to reproduce because it's damaging them. Um, and then an, another animal might just drink the river water that animal dies or experiences mutations as well that make it hard for them to reproduce and then all of that pollution goes into the ocean and does the same things to the ocean animals we let out um fumes into the air that kill our birds we have uh acid rain which is caused by fumes going into the air from factories um and binding with water molecules and when that falls down on the ground it kills our plants and sometimes our animals and over harvesting as well or the overfishing over we eat too much chicken um i'm not saying we're contributing to that if you have a source where you have they can provide reliable amounts of chicken then that's great but um over harvesting can lead to all of that um extinction of animals and in the 1800s, does anybody know the story of Moby Dick, the whale? Okay, well, Moby Dick is about um, whalers back in the 1800s who, oh yes, yeah, somebody knows uh, Moby Dick. And um, so back in the 1800s people you know right now we use like kerosene oil and we use oil that we get out of the ground to power our cars and to give us electricity and all of that but back in the 1800s they used to kill whales they used to go out into the sea um the ocean that is um and they used to kill um sperm whales they used to kill the, like the largest whales that they could find and they used to take out the blubber, which is the fat from the whales, and they used to use that to cook, shine their shoes, light their lamps, because you know they never had electricity back then, they had lamps. And they did that for a period of like 100 years, and they wiped out over 1.5 million uh, blue whale, sperm whale um, specimens. Like they literally killed one, imagine, killing look at imagine how large a whale is think about it a, a huge whale it's probably as big as a regular ship right and humans managed to kill 1.5 million of those in the 1800s over harvesting um yeah so that we could have oil back in those days but now we have a different form which is not as which is not good but it's different. We don't have to kill whales for that. So animals which are extinct. So we have the beige dolphin, which was based, was functionally extinct by 2006, which basically means they couldn't, um, at, by 2006, they couldn't find any trace of any others. Um, we have the black rhino, the West, West African black rhino, which was extinct by 2006 as well. This bird, this um, was extinct. This became extinct because persons used to kill the rhinos for their horns. The horns um, are used for, they're called ivory, and they're used for a lot of purposes. And what they do, they even do it to this day, but they do it less now because there are more provisions in place to stop it. They just like literally kill the rhino, cut the horn off, and yeah, that's it. The reason why they have to kill the rhino, that they, they can't just take the horn, is because rhinos are very dangerous. So it's they have to kill it in order to get the thing off of it. And when they get the horn off, they don't have a need for the rhino to exist anymore. So what Afri what persons in what conservationists in Africa are doing now, conservationists are persons who um try to make ensure that these animals stay alive they're cutting off the horns as soon as they get old enough to have like perfect horns they just cut off the horns so that they don't become a victim of this um the golden toad is extinct um 
this is extinct as well. The Pyrenean ibex is extinct, and the one of the most popular, apart from dinosaurs, one of the most popular extinct animals is the dodo bird. It was extinct in the 1760s, and this was because people actually used to eat them. So you know how we eat chicken? People used to eat the dodo bird. This really weird looking bird. Yeah, it was bigger than a chicken. So they had like full meals. And um, <clears throat> what else? Animals which are enlisted, which are in endangerment, in, which are in danger. Mm -hmm. So pandas, everybody loves pandas. If you don't love pandas, well, you probably love another animal. But pandas are endangered. Um, orangutans, sharks, rhinos, because you have different types of rhinos. So rhinos are overall um, on the endangered list because no matter what kind of rhino you are, West African, East African, North African, South African, whatever type of rhino you are, people want the ivory, they want the horns. Cheetahs are... Um, on the endangered list as well. Parrots, certain tortoises, tigers, because everybody wants a tiger um, shirt, everybody wants a tiger pet, and they're removing them from the environment and causing them to, you know, um, become endangered. And um, there are, there's good news though. Sometimes when animals are deemed extinct, we find out that there are some of them that actually survived. Unfortunately, that was not the case for dinosaurs, but for the Jamaican iguana, I think, yes. At one point, we considered them to be extinct. And then we discovered them again in the I don't remember if it was Blue Mountains or some mountain or some hill in St. Catherine, but ever since then, hmm, is that mm. <laughs> um, yeah, they found them again, and so we've been putting in place measures to ensure that they are staying alive. How is it? How is that unfortunate with the dinosaurs. I don't want them here to kill me. <laughs> well, uh, animals are animals. That's true. We wouldn't want them here to kill us. We don't want any animals to kill us. So, prevention steps. So, in order to preserve the lives of these animals, here are some stuff that we can do. We can Coordinate funds with your neighbors and fellow concerned citizens to take out an ad in your local newspaper. Or in this day and age, you can actually just have online campaigns. You can have um, petitions. Design a website devoted entirely to the potential extinction of animal species. Partner with advocacy groups at local universities and Donations to funds and foundations devoted to protection of animals from mass extinction. Um, in Jamaica, we also have agencies that help to preserve the these animals. So, um, Jamaica's Forestry Division helps with that to some extent. Oh my, it's not Nepal. I can't remember the other, the name of the, the one that we call whenever there's like a crocodile in our backyard. But Jamaica does have um things in place to ensure that our animals are being protected. And um, yeah, because whenever we, we, we see these animals coming out of their habitats and coming onto our property, for example, crocodiles, we see this a lot on the news, or snakes, when they come to um, persons' homes or whatever, people always, you know, lose it and they're so quick to want to kill them. But then, you know, they call the agency and they come and they rescue them and relocate them or bring them back to, an, to 
um, their previous environment or to somewhere where they won't have to end up in that place again. So organize public protests outside government offices, zoos, facilities to bring the problem of animal extinction to light. Join the effort to stop animal extinction by volunteering with a local wildlife foundation. Mobilize your friends, family, and fellow conservationists to write letters to the government officials on a regular basis, conserve resources, and live green lifestyle as a part of your effort to prevent animal extinction. And speaking of living a green lifestyle, one of the things that Jamaica did this year that won't only help our environment, but also our, um, our, our the animals in, in our environment is the banning of plastics. This year and last year, we started last year, especially straws. Straws often end up, well, plastics on a whole, often end up in the digestive system of fish and turtles and, you know, all the animals within the sea. And so by minimizing that, Jamaica is not only helping our land environment, but also our fellow sea creatures. Well, we're not a sea creature, but our beloved sea creatures in the ocean. Oh my, um, I saw a straw in a turtle's nose. Mm -hmm. um, straws can literally get everywhere because turtles, they don't know the difference between plastic and food. They're turtles. They're smart, but they're not that smart because, you know, they're turtles. They eat um, plastic all the time as well. And yeah, that's, how, that's another way how pollution affects our animals. They, they mistake our waste for food or sometimes they um, accidentally ingest or waste as food and that kills them. So, mm -hmm, that's, that's my presentation. Does anybody have any questions about a specific animal? Any questions about anything that I shared earlier? Or any personal questions? Any questions at all? They are welcomed. Nope, I don't have any questions. Okay, all right, that's great. Um, I probably have questions for you guys then. Um, did anybody learn anything new? that they probably want to let everybody else know that they learned? Well, I actually found out the dodo bird was real in, mm -hmm. in one of my co crossword puzzle books, but I never knew it was extinct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's fun, we learned something new today. Um, about dodo birds. Alivi, did you learn anything new? Mm, so everybody learned about dodo birds today. Awesome, great. I knew those animals. Yeah, I, I figured that you'd know them. But the real you know, intensive part was, you know, the extinction. And we have to play, our, we have to, you know, as younger people try our very best to not contribute to the extinction of these animals. Even if it means, you know, living a greener life, we can start there. Um, in our day and age, what, some of the stuff that I listed on the uh, PowerPoint, it's, it's kind of outdated. And, and um, I say it's kind of outdated because, um, some of those things we wouldn't necessarily do anymore, right? We have online petitions. We have campaigns that we can do on online on our phones. We have um, pages that are run to pages on like Instagram or Twitter or wherever that are run to do these kind of campaigns. So there's like more that we can do as individuals to support these campaigns. We can donate financially to them. We can volunteer at the um, the zoo or wherever to help find and 